Yo, what's going on everyone? This video we're going to talk about how to make consistent profits during the bull run. We're talking about the NFT and crypto bull run here and what the strategy is. Now I can say there's a lot of mistakes I made the last bull run, but there's a lot of things that I did that worked and I flipped NFTs very successfully during that time. I just didn't layer out correctly. So there's got to be a lot of adjustments that I make this time around. So who is this strategy for? Again, this is if you want to make consistent profits. So this is for people who have relatively low capital and you want to grow your crypto bags. This is for people that want to be risk adverse and make guaranteed profits. I say that in finger quotations there. There's really no such thing as guaranteed profits instead of moonshot profits. Basically, you're locking in, you know, your short two, three X profits and you're not killing yourself because oh i locked in two three four ten x profits instead of a hundred x profits when it became a moonshot we're not here to speculate okay we're here to lock in guaranteed profits meaning when you're in profit you typically take profit all right this is also for people if you are newer to the space or you're just getting back into it this only really works well in a bull market other trading strategies typically are better during a bear all right, so step one is obtain hyped upcoming mints. This is your lowest risk and highest reward strategy that you can use because when projects are pre-mint, that is typically when they are the most hyped. If you guys remember last cycle, we had projects like Trip and Ape Tribe. I did very well on those. I believe that was a six soul mint. It ran to 80 soul. I actually sold it at 80 soul. I minted two, the other one I sold at 10, but uh, yeah, the other one, I sold at 80, right? So I held the other one all the way back down to 10, and I definitely wish I sold both at 80, right? Uh, OK Bears is another one right before this one, and they actually ran all the way to, I believe, 250 Solana or something crazy like that. So you guys can just see how crazy mints can be. This is not your typical mint, OK? There's a lot of them that, you know, you're just going to have to be OK locking in a 2x profit, right? So here's what you need to do. Identify hyped mints. You need to study the numbers. How fast does it sell out? Is that mint bar moving before you start going to mint it? If it's a slower mint, it's a little bit harder to have that floor price run post mint. Typically a good sign is if that mint bar is moving very fast and you know there's very high demand for that project, that means that you probably wanna mint it. You need to study, okay? How do the numbers look like on X and Discord? Do they have genuine engagement? Is there people talking about these projects within Alpha Discords? Is there people talking about it on the X timeline that have genuine curiosity about the project, that have genuine interest in the project, right? Not just people like doing engage to earn type behavior, right? Or they're just trying to earn whitelist. You're trying to find people that actually have genuine interest in the project because that shows demand. Who is the team behind the project? Do they have a reputation in the space? Are they well known? Have they worked on other projects in the past? Do they have influence in the space? You wanna have a system. I'm gonna talk about some systems here in this video a little bit later on. And one of the most important things is don't be greedy. Do not speculate. Lock in guaranteed profits when they are available. So like I said, this strategy isn't for everyone. This might mean that you sell something at a 3x or a 5x and eventually it runs to a 10x. Do we know that it's going to run to a 10x? No, we don't. Like I said, we're not here to speculate. We're here to lock in guaranteed profits. So how do you get whitelist? You might be asking. You want to join alpha discords. Typically, smaller communities are the best to do this because you're going to have less competition competing for those whitelist spots. If you join a 10K collection, and you know they don't get allocated a ton of whitelist spots you're competing with a lot of other people within that community however if you get with a smaller community say like pumas or say like my discord or you know all these other private DAOs that are out there you guys have a very high likelihood of winning whitelist because you have less people competing to enter into those giveaways to win the whitelist so i highly recommend smaller communities communities that are active communities that get a ton of whitelist allocation and they get them frequently you want to stay consistent grab whitelist spots even if you don't plan on minting the nft i cannot emphasize this enough you never know when a project might start getting a bunch of hype maybe you got access to that one really early on 
and they didn't really market that much or they didn't get traction yet and then you skipped it and then later on they got really big and you go oh how do i get whitelist and now it's too late okay so grab whitelist even if you don't plan on minting you can always decide later if you want to mint okay that's the key takeaway here you want to be active on Subber and Atlas, get those accounts set up, get your wallets plugged into them and have those ready to go. And last but not least, network, network, network. I'll expand on that more here in a bit. All right, so I'm going to emphasize again, lock in profits. Typically with NFTs, you have very short sell windows. When you're in profit, that's when you take profit. Again, we're not here to speculate and to come up with conclusions on where projects could be going in terms of their floor price, we're here to make guaranteed profits using the strategy. So when do you sell? It depends how fast the NFT is moving. Your typical flip is gonna be a two or three X if it's a fairly hyped mint. If it's a really hyped mint, like say like the OK Bears or Trip and Ape or Mad Lads or several other ones that have been out there, then you can make those big 10 X gains, right? but most of them are gonna be two, three X, you get out. Again, we're not here to speculate as to where an NFT could go. We're here to make profits and steadily grow your crypto bags. Last thing here is don't get emotionally attached. Sell when you need to sell. And that is very hard to do because you will get attached to the teams, you'll get attached to the artwork. These are two very important lessons right here. I actually can't remember this one over here. I think this one's name was Daku Reapers or something. But these ones ran to very high floor prices. I can't remember. I believe it was around 30 sold. And they both ended up being rug pulls. Okay. So I promise you, it feels a lot better to sell something too early and lock in a profit than to hold something and all the way down to zero. Okay. So lock in those profits when you have profits have a system all right i'll go through this real quick there's the 211 strategy i've talked about this in the past on my channel you can buy two quick flip one and hold one so ideally the quick flip you're 2xing your money so you're getting your initial capital back for both of the mints and then you can hold the other one to valhalla if you want or if you want to speculate as to where it could go at least you're de-risking a little bit by buying two all right so that is actually a really popular strategy that i used last cycle and it worked out quite well for me you can always do the lowest risk strategy, which is buy one and quick sell it. Get your two, three, 10 X profit, depending on the mint, quick flip, no holds, buy, flip, forget it, you know, move on to the next. You can also do things like high conviction plays and long-term holds. That doesn't really apply towards this strategy. So I'm just going to skip over that, but I do recommend building a bag of long-term holds of teams that are actually building out real good projects. Uh, but you know, then maybe they take some time to mature and build out, but you know, have a couple long-term bag holds that you have, because sometimes those are some of the best profits you can make, or sometimes just the utility you get from the NFT is actually worth the price that you pay for it, which in my opinion, that's really what we need to be working towards in this space. All right. Second way to make consistent profits in this bull run is to ride the wave. What I mean by that is follow the metas get in early to them do not chase them so what i mean by that is for instance meme coins we've been seeing a lot of people posting their meme coin gains all over the twitter timeline and maybe you see that and you go oh that's stupid it's just a one-off profit that that person made and then you see three days later you go man people are still making profits a week later people are still making profits and you go okay well maybe it's time for me to get into meme coins guys if you're seeing it all over your timeline and a, you know, a week goes by, Web3 moves very fast. Metas change very fast. Sometimes they stick around for a little bit, but for the most part, they only hang around for a short while. So you might get into meme coins and you might do well on one or two, but then you're gonna start getting wrecked. And then you're gonna see something new pop up on your timeline. We've already kind of seen things go from meme coins to airdrops, like metas shift all the time. So you're going to see a DeFi wave, a metaverse wave, gaming, branding, gambling, rev share, airdrops. Like we've seen so many different metas come through the space. All right. This was Champions. This is one that I minted for $22. I ran to $25,000 and I ended up selling it on the correction back down to nine, but I still went from $22 to 9,000 on this NFT. Okay. Nobody wishes that they held onto the NFT back down to where it is now. It's still a great community. They're still around today but they're not worth near what they were before. Could they go back up? Maybe, I don't know. I'm not here to speculate again. This was Soul Chicks. This was a very terrible gaming NFT and they ran to 18 or 20 Soul when Solana was at all time highs. So that was worth quite a bit. 
It's a terrible looking NFT. It was a terrible game. And everybody that held all the way from 18 sold down to where they're at now, which is essentially nothing. Uh, everybody wishes they sold at the top, right? Same with Borioku Dragons. Still a great community, still around today. No FUD their way at all. I actually like them a lot. Uh, but again, they ran to 250 soul when Solano was a lot higher. And now they're back down to wherever they're at now. They're actually at a fair floor price now compared to a lot of other projects. But again, nobody wishes that they held all the way down if they did. Poker Face was another one that's a ga uh, gambling NFT that kind of started off a, a gambling uh, meta at that time. And they ran to a very high floor price too. So you can make a lot of money following these metas. Again, though, this is why you need to network. This is why you need to be an early uh, so i wrote down here do not get greedy <laughs> again i'll emphasize this i promise you it feels a hundred percent worse well sorry i worded this wrong it feels a hundred percent better <laughs> selling something too early than it does watching your nft and crypto go to zero okay so again this is about making consistent profits not making these huge moonshots right step number three to make consistent profits in this bull is to grow your web three audience and you guys might be scratching your head a little bit on this one but let me explain here's what you want to do you want to create daily content it doesn't need to be videos like i make but just make a daily twitter post respond with people on twitter you know just interact with people on x i guess i need to start calling it x now uh, so provide value to others join strong communities participate in spaces interact in discords you know do discord calls with people attend nft events all those things are great things to do to grow your web three brand and audience now why do you want to do this and how does this help you make money well networking leads to opportunities okay that can lead to if you want to work in the web3 space maybe there's a web3 company you want to work for maybe you can work for an nft team and you can help them out with the unique skill set that you have maybe you're a great artist maybe you're a good community manager maybe you're good at managing discords maybe you're good at marketing all these things are very valuable to web3 companies you can also, if you network with people, maybe you get early allocation to a whitelist or a presale. You know, there's a lot of times you can attend an NFT event or you can just get to know people in the space. You can get in these private discords. You guys can get access to people that are building really cool things and get early alpha to those projects early on. You can lead the sponsors and other forms of revenue. Growing your Web3 audience is something you should be doing anyways, because if you're going to use any of these strategies, you need to be in tune and you need to be dialed in to really capitalize on them anyway. So you're missing a huge opportunity if you're not going out there and growing your Web3 audience. All right. Strategy number four is to maximize on one sector of coins and play through the pump wave, starting with high cap coins down to the low cap. But let me explain. You want to kind of follow a category and become a master at that category. So you guys can pick what you want to do. I'm going to share with you guys a couple things that are suggestions that maybe you can look into and that I plan on doing myself. So I think Solana is going to be one of the best movers in this bull run. All right. I think people are going to realize that it's a better product than Ethereum in terms of speed, efficiency, use case, it's just overall better of an experience working on Solana and playing in the Solana ecosystem. So if Solana takes a big market share and people see Solana go way up in price, that's going to cause investors and people to start looking into the other tokens underneath Solana. So if you're holding a huge bag of Solana, it pumps really big. You take a little bit of profits out of that and then you trickle it down into these smaller coins. And typically the smaller coins have more room to run than the higher cap ones. So maybe you're making a two or three X on Solana, but then down here you're making anywhere from a three to 10 X on these coins, right? It's usually a trickle down effect. Just like when we see Bitcoin run, you know that an altcoin run is coming following a Bitcoin pump. So it's the same thing. You can follow tokens under the same network here and you can make a ton of profits. Another good strategy is you can do the layer one strategy. Maybe Solana pumps a bunch and then maybe you get into AVAX and other DeFi coins. Maybe you follow gaming. Okay. So a good strategy a lot of people are doing. Gaming is a meta that a lot of people see coming up here soon. 
you could start buying the gaming tokens. So maybe you get into sand or mana and then flow beam, alluvium, and you go all the way down to the super low cap one. So you can kind of go high cap, mid tier, low cap. You guys can kind of do this strategy however you want, but this is an age old strategy that's worked for every single bull run that's come through. The biggest thing again is to lock in your profits. Strategy number five is lending platforms in airdrop farming so if you guys watched my previous video i kind of did a breakdown of sharky fi and banks each nft lending platform is a little bit different but they're pretty similar in how they work essentially you're putting up a solana loan for someone's nft and they repay that back usually relatively quickly some are as low as three days some are up to average on seven days some even go 14 days or like banks is basically however long you want the loan to run uh, so there's a lot of different ways you guys can do this. So typically it's a short-term loan. You get paid back relatively quickly. It is a fairly low ROI, but you get it back quick, okay? So, you know, it is a good way to grow your bags. Maybe while you're waiting for that next NFT mint that's coming up, there's not usually a mint every single day that you can two, three, 10 X on. So, you know, sometimes you just need your capital to be working while it's sitting there while you're waiting to mint that next NFT. Just make sure that you don't put out a loan and then you can't mint because you put all your liquid into this. So that's a great strategy to utilize. Again, I made a video with uh, Sharky Fi and Banks. Go back and watch that video because it's very informative on how to do those loans. All right, the next thing you can do is crypto lending and the DeFi airdrops. So this is pretty straightforward. If you interact with different protocols on different blockchains, you guys can be potentially eligible for an airdrop. We've seen some huge gains that people made with the Pith airdrop, with the Bonk airdrop, with the Jito airdrop. People have made some crazy stupid money. So this is getting a lot of attention right now. But what I want you guys to do is not just follow what everybody else is doing. This is what everybody else is doing right now. I'm not saying it's not gonna work. Do this, but start looking into other things too as well. So what a lot of people are doing right now, they're staking on Marinade because Marinade said they're going to have an airdrop. Then they're moving it over to Margin Fire, Solin, they're, you know, with their MSOL, then they're getting VSOL, they're going through Camino, Drift, and they're doing USDC staking and utilizing that platform because Drift has said they might have an airdrop. People are doing the wormhole thing. But what I want you to invite you to do is start exploring possibly other blockchains. If you want to do this airdrop strategy, try to get in early. The people that made a ton of money from the Gito airdrop was because they've been utilizing that for a long time, right? And so you want to get in early to these other platforms. So maybe you go over to Aptos or you go to Injection or you go to other blockchains and you start utilizing their protocols on their blockchains and then you start being eligible for a potential airdrop over there, right? So try to be ahead of the curve. Again, you know, when the meta shifts over there, if it does, you are going to be well positioned if an airdrop comes your way. So this can be very distracting though. You know, when you're moving around to all of these different strategies, sometimes it's better just to lock into one. So maybe you're only using two or three of these five strategies to, you know, make money throughout the bull run, all right? So this is pretty time consuming to research and study all of this stuff. All right, so what do you do with the profits that you make from these strategies? This is a big mistake that I did last run because I did a lot of the strategies that I talked about in this video. And when we started crashing really hard, I did not take the right actions. I kept DCAing, I kept utilizing these strategies and overall my profits went way down. I could have done much better. So what I recommend is having a system for your profits. You guys come to your own conclusions and your own you know, ideas on how you're gonna do that. But here's some of the things that you can do. So the first and foremost thing, while we're still in the bull cycle, you can rinse and repeat these processes and they will keep making you money time and time again. You can move a percentage of your gains into lower risk allocations. So maybe you know you doubled your money and on the profit portion of that money that you made, maybe you put a certain percentage into Bitcoin or USDC and it's a more stable crypto that you can just hold on to rather than speculating and playing this flip game. You know, you get your initial capital back so you can keep doing that flip game but maybe you're stabilizing a little bit into more secure things like Bitcoin and USDC. You could also buy into long-term projects with real utility. You know, I'm not here to say flip every single NFT that you get, but be very intentional about what projects you plan on holding long-term. Despite all of the BS that's in this space, 
there are real projects that have true innovation that will solve issues that will provide value to its holders within this space that are worth holding on to all right so just like i said before be very intentional about what nfts you hold and don't hold too many nfts in your nft portfolio you know you really should only be in tune with five or less nfts is what i recommend because if you hold 100 different nfts like i did this last run it's like i could not keep up with every single project and a lot of those ones they started falling off and i should have saw the signs that the team wasn't still there putting in work like they were in the beginning so just be very aware of that if you do put things into long-term holds and be very aware you might be along for a long ride until that really pays off but a lot of times it's just about being a part of the community it's about getting value from the community it's providing value to the community and just feeling a part of something so guys i can say being a part of a strong community is well worth the money in this space last thing is here if you need money cash out a percentage all right if you need it if you don't need it then keep investing and keep growing your bags but i can say i wish i wish i was layering out as we were peeking up to the top of that last bull run or even as we started coming back down a little bit i wish i cashed out a little bit more instead of constantly reinvesting so ultimately guys again these strategies are not for everybody this is not if you want to hit those huge moonshot those 10 hundred x's those are great but they very rarely happen and you have to get very lucky with it there's definitely tail signs that you can look out for and you can get in on those kind of early but i'm here to make consistent profits that's what this video is about it's about minimizing your risk if you have a huge bag and you're like i don't care if this goes to zero then go ahead take those long shots but if you're like me lock in consistent profits grow your crypto bags over time a 2x return is not a bad return okay uh, and you guys can repeat that process over and over again. So I hope you got value from this video. If you did, give me a follow and I'll catch you in the next one.